Ghostman Horror presents The End by Mark Anthony Rains. Wolf's howl, vampire bat wings flutter silently in the wind. The ghostman rises from his slumber. The dead to bring you a tale of four strange figures in a run-down dive of pub. And this is what happens next. Sitting in a run-down pu- dive of a pub, a kind of place you sp- spat on the floor, no one would blink an eyelid. The store dust on the floor was covered with a hint of red, but not from wine, but iron-rich crimson blood. It was full of brown furniture, the bog-standard fire lit in the corner with a plaque over it saying, Never gone out since 1789, which the landlord of the fox and the hound knew was complete bullshit. The fire was cleaned daily and relit to keep the myth alive. Sitting at the antique oak table, with four beings, the chairs were wicker, cane backs were designed for comfort. But these four gave, never gave a fig, as they were here at this moment in time. The universe of business, a scheduled strange agenda, set in stone many moons ago. First of the four was Warren, who had muscles on his muscles, long black ha- hair, a gold chain with a gold bullet pendant to gold earrings of which looked like ass- axes. He had a voice like granite. Second was Peril. She wore nothing but black clothing from head to toe, looking like a fan of goth music. She was sweet as sour candy. Third Faith was a cut, thin as a catwalk model, with long blonde hair, but her face was riddled with acne due to the endless makeup trailed on her face. She spoke in soft tones, but her remarks were acid. Finally, the fourth and final was Dave, who was born an albino, and used to the freak show glares from the public. Dave embraces being a freak, as it meant people would leave him be, and this suited him. Warren, how long has it been since we all met up together like this? Peril, it's been, it's been long enough, as you know. We've been busy doing our jobs, Faith, yes. Darling, I have a little fun on the way. But Dave just grunted. As after some catching up, playing all the pub games like darts, dynamos, skittles, each beginning to let boredom settle in. To the point the conversation around the table started to change. Ron, do you think it's going to happen? Peril, it's been on the verge for many centuries now, but I can sense things are changing. Faith, if, if I want, if you want my humble opinion, it would have made happen, should have happened 20 years ago, 1999. It would have made perfect sense. Day, the master did not deem it as an agreement with the lights to wait for the signs. Well, on you and your bloody signs, I wish it was now, as I'm getting bored. Suddenly the clock on the wall stopped. All the punters at the fox and the hounds, including the landlord, were frozen in time. A dark figure peers out the pub. Fire, horns, goats, hooves, panpipes. He looks at the table, not looking like a snapshot of a photograph capturing a, um, at a moment in time. Figure raises his hand and points to Warren, Pell, Faith and Dave. He quotes in the Old Testament of the Bible. Calls to acts out one of the most famous parts of the Bible. The final chapters in the book of Revelation are dedicated to the end of the days prophesied by John the Evangelist. War, pencilers, fame, phantom and death. Collecting the four horsemen of the clock booklets. Get into their motorcycles which give the illusion of each riding a white horse into the world. The time has come for the end. The ghost man crackles and lays back down down in his coffin. As the lid slowly closes, he turns and says, Don't have too many nightmares, my children.